the cloud. Here we go. Well, good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Penn, and so happy to have you with us. This is being recorded. This is the presentation of the informational session for the OJJDP TAPS Academy multi-state mentoring grant opportunity. Uh, let me first start off by saying so blessed and so glad to know that the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention is recognizing the work of TAPS Academy and awarding us this grant to allow for TAPS Academy to spread to nine different areas across the United States. So this is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'm joined by Ms. Middleton, whom you've seen on the email, who has been just a wonderful person writing the grants and working with us and helping us front end and back end in this process. My intent today is to give you the opportunity to know more about preparing while you're writing these grants, these RFP, right, responding to the RFP. Of course, answer any questions and open up the information about what this is, TAPS Academy. Hopefully you've had an opportunity to visit our website. You have perused us online, as well as seen our postings on social media. So I'm gonna hope everything works right here. I'm gonna share my screen and get us started with the presentation. Oh, let's get going here. All right, there's our website right there, www.tapsacademy.org. Uh, please, that is the place to go to learn more about TAPS Academy, to uh, find out any information, the folks involved, all that good information that makes for a strong proposal. Please go ahead and check us out at www.tapsacademy.org. So our purpose today, the timeline, the introductions, what is TAPS Academy, the grant implementation, any specifics that go along with it. And let, you're going to hear me say this often, sustainability past the grant period. If you want to know already what is important, the ability for each applicant to show sustainability past the two-year grant period, extremely important. So already right, you've got the answer to something very, very important. Then we're gonna do some question and answers. And throughout, you'll see some pictures that I think using all of our sensory uh, abilities, these are pictures of TAPS Academy and locations all around the United States and even the Caribbean. And that top picture to the right is TAPS Academy doing a service learning project uh, just outside Las Vegas, TAPS Academy Las Vegas. And also letting you know that we have been featured in several publications to include the COPS office, which gave us the original grant back in 2011 with the Houston Police Department. We have been featured in their lessons to advance community policing. These documents that exist, they're available, Google, uh, Department of Justice, you're able to see some of the other places in which we exist. We're also joined by Mr. Will Manning. Mr. Will Manning, you'll get to know Mr. Will Manning very, very well. He is the National Program Director. He is the person that you'll be dealing with uh, throughout the time period. He makes sure everything works well for you. So, Mr. Will Manning, good morning. How are you, sir? Very good morning to everybody. I'm still trying to get some team members on here, but very that's good. That's all right. To that's, be here. that's fine. That's fine. All right. So our RFP timeline, this is what we're looking at here. Just going over what exists here. It's found on the RFP webpage of, of TAPS, but this is the informational Zoom. May 10th, the applications are submitted by 1159 Central Time on that evening. June 1st, by June 1st, we will notify all applicants. We intend to do that in late May, but by June, all will be known. We're going to use the month of June to continue to complete all MOUs, agreements, all paperwork, logistics, et cetera, so that by July and uh, definitely by August, there'll be training that takes place and there will be the beginning of the program. Think of July time period that there will be a day that we will set aside where your team and the TAPS team can come together via Zoom to have about a five hour training period. And during that time through Zoom, you will be well instructed on how this wonderful coming together for two years will work. The questions and answers will be done. 
We'll already have the MOUs in place so that you can start in August as schools begin as early as early August, mid-August, but uh, making sure we're ready and good to go by that August time period. So sometime in July, if necessary, early August, we'll have our training so you'll be ready to begin in August. Think of the grant period as year one, August 2022 to July 2023, and year two, August 23 to July 2024. If you have any questions along the way, please put them in the chat. Ms. Middleton or Mr. Will Manning, they'll keep an eye on that. If there's something that needs to be addressed as we're going through, certainly pause there, but we're going to save some time at the end for Q&A. And just some more pictures of TAPS Academy graduation in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, uh, national, not national coverage, excuse me, local coverage by the media of what is taking place, a fine graduation with the certificates, just this coming together of TAPS Academy of, of bringing youth and police together. So who's this guy talking to you? Indeed, I'm a professor of criminology at uh, University of Houston Clear Lake. And what I really enjoy very, very much, and it's really the coming together of university and community, being the director of the Teen and Police Service Academy, former veteran or am a veteran of the US Army, Fulbright Scholar to Egypt. And I, I often point that out in my presentations because it is this idea of reducing social distance and bringing people together that I think really formalized as my time, not too long after 9-11, September 11, 2001, all of us certainly have memories of that horrific day that uh, wanted to go to the Middle East and was able to become a Fulbright Scholar and from that work to reduce the social distance between that of persons of the Middle East and persons of speaking Arabic and English in the United States and having great understanding. That is really, I think, give a great foundation of how we can apply some of those practices in an international environment to our local environment to make for better understanding of youth and police. AmeriCorps volunteer in Fort Worth, Texas, I uh, enjoyed that very, very much also with the Diamond Hill area where we established uh, an after-school program, a tutoring program, a movement to citizenship, summer camps, and others in a largely Latino, Hispanic, Spanish-speaking area. Enjoyed that very, very much. 75 publications or more and consider myself international police citizen trainer and advocate. Okay, let's, let's, let's get this going here. We were awarded the grant from the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention in 2021. The intent or the purpose is to increase evidence-based practices of mentoring around the United States. So we read the RFP from the Office of Juvenile Justice Delinquency Prevention. We knew what we were doing since 2011 through 2012 with TAPS Academy beginning with the Houston Police Department. And we said, hey, we think the two come together very, very nicely. That mentorship and what we have seen with the successes as our research-based, evidence-based programming tells us, the success that we've seen with highly trained officers prepared to be mentors to the youth. And we think of it as dual mentorship that the officers gain so much almost a mentorship of being a better officer from being with these teens. So dual mentorship taking place. So you'll, you'll hear me use the word mentorship, but think of it in a broader sense that both the youth are gaining and the police are gaining. Such very important concepts in our time of so much strife that exists between not just youth, but community and police. And we hope that that grows that the youth tell other youth the youth tell their family members and others about the relationship that they have with police to counter perhaps what they're seeing on social media and through other places. And we also hope that it occurs in that police car and when that police officer is interacting with other officers to move away from the stereotypes that may exist about our youth. So our challenge is to move TAPS Academy to nine additional cities around the United States. That's where you will help us. 
We're looking at around $66,000 reimbursed for two years. Let me make sure I'm stating that correctly. Reimbursed. Your expenses are reimbursed, paid about quarterly. And those are things that'll be worked out when we get the MOU together. But a reimbursed expenses for two years and the ability to use the funds, as we'll talk a little bit later, is for personnel, personnel and service learning. But personnel are your reimbursable expenses. And we evaluate throughout the process, pre-test, post-test. This is a major evaluation period that's built into this grant that will take place. So evaluation, you'll be working on that, being a part of that to see the out, the effect, the outcome of what are the youth police thinking before this mentorship program? What are they thinking after? What are they thinking uh, in maybe time period afterward? So evaluation is very, very important to what we're going to do with this TAPS Academy multi-state mentoring grant. All right, our current footprint of TAPS Academy has us here in Houston since 2011. We were founded by the Houston Police Department. So the story goes, and I'll give you the short, short, short version of it is that at that time in 2011, Chief McClellan looked around to his assistant chiefs, knew of a grant opportunity by the cops office. Chief Brian Lumpkin raised his hand and said, hey, Chief, I'll follow up on that. Chief Brian Lumpkin was teaching for me as an adjunct professor at University of Houston Clear Lake. He called me, we got together from blessings, hours and hours and hours, we were uh, awarded the grant from the COPS office back in 2011 with our first TAPS Academy taking place in 2012 at Beechnut Academy, which was the alternative high school, middle school here in Houston. Just think of a, a huge uh, uh, former Walmart and you would see a school with perhaps starting off with 200 youth in the beginning of the school year, August, September, mushrooming to about 1,200 youth by April, May of uh, that school year. So that's where we wanted to go. TAPS Academy has been in high schools, middle schools, juvenile detention facilities, alternative schools, after school programs, just a variety. And you'll, you'll hear me also move us from at-risk youth to youth as there has just been a demand for TAPS Academy, no matter the youth being labeled as at risk, we like to say at risk at promise, but the idea that there needs to be an organization that's building this better relationship between youth and police and TAPS Academy is doing that. 501c3 organization in 2015. So the grant was supposed to be for two years, the original grant for TAPS Academy, we extended it about for four years. We then had the question, what are we going to do? That question was answered affirmatively, we will not stop. And we turned that grant into a 501c3 organization or the concept of TAPS into a 501c3 organization. And since 2015, we have been independent of the Houston Police Department working with them, but our own 501c3 and our own Former Chief Charles McClellan, who was the police chief at the time, is a member of our board in 2015 as we're going forward as an independent organization. Here in Houston, our home, we touch about 25 schools, about 25 schools, weekly 700 students that we have in our TAPS program that we see weekly, middle schools and high schools. We heard the call that uh, not just eighth graders need to be involved in TAPS. So we find ourselves moving down to that seventh grade. And there's even calls for us to go down to sixth grade and fifth grade. We'll see how it goes. But for you, your primary thought should be that high school student and let us know if there's an interest in middle school, but that high school student is what we are primarily looking for. 10th grade, possibly 11th grade. Why so? We want to keep track of the youth so if they're in the 10th grade now, they will probably be in the same school for 11th grade. And if they're in the 11th grade, they will probably be in the same school for 12th grade, easy to find and keep up with, with the um, research and also mentoring. Our national sites, Columbus, Ohio, El Paso, Texas, Grambling, Louisiana, Las Vegas, Nevada, Marion, Ohio, Miami, Florida, Salisbury, North Carolina, Upper Darbury, Pennsylvania, and you're going to add 
nine more sites to us. So right now in 2021, we serve about 2,000 youth. We'll probably double that number, at least move that number up to about 3,000 with your help in 2022. This old faded picture here is a memory of TAPS Academy as it started in Beechnut Academy. The old uniforms of the Houston Police Department, my colleague and good friend, Brian Lumpkin, who unfortunately passed away in May of last year, working together. And this is an assistant chief being there as we were having TAPS Academy twice a week, 15 weeks, uh, about three hours total together with officers. And, and I, I hope this picture, these two pictures, bring out the concern and dedication that these officers show. It's going to be extremely important for you to choose the right officers, those officers that have perhaps demonstrated their ability to have a special affection for you, to have the, the patience, to understand team brain, and to be those that can listen very well as concepts such as voice, such as procedural justice, 21st century policing, is what we believe in TAPS Academy. And we need officers that are prepared to do that. Sit down with the youth and, and the pointing of the finger. No, that's not us. The idea of listening, working together, growing together is what TAPS Academy is. And we'll be talking about all of that and moving forward with that as we go forward. Um, so keep that in mind as you're thinking about who are the officers who will make the best TAPS officers for your city. There's a lot going on in this slide, but I wanna overview it for you to give you an idea of the population that we work with, that perhaps you should be thinking of for your TAPS Academy youth. Now TAPS Academy defines two major programs here in Houston, here in Texas. You'll see here, for example, TAPS Academy, which is 11 weeks of TAPS programming. Well, when we started TAPS Academy, the demand became great. And so TAPS Academy in that time frame of 2013, 2014, we were in several different schools. TAPS Academy 11 weeks was sometimes put inside of a science class, maybe a social studies class, maybe a history class for the 11 weeks for about an hour and a half each week. And that was fun. We were before school, after school, detention programs, all sorts of things. Well, what was happening was we didn't have a good standardization of the program and it was making for some issues. So we took our curriculum to the Texas Education Agency. The Texas Education Agency reviewed our curriculum and granted TAPS Academy one high school credit for students who complete TAPS in the state of Texas. Now I have to put that parentheses there in the state of Texas. Why is that important? It's important because it sets the precedent that this curriculum is good enough, is approved by, thought of highly enough to grant one high school credit in the state of Texas. We hope that you will take that as a foundational piece to move TAPS Academy when it's called Teen Poll to your city, to your state, to your uh, school legislature, bodies, et cetera, and say, look what was done in Texas, and here's the possibility for us in this state, in this city, to have this as a state credit for our students in high school. We also take the advantage of this and got the approval that eighth graders here in Texas can take this TAPS Academy curriculum and before they even step foot in high school, have earned one academic credit. We see hundreds of youth here in the Houston area move through this. And we're very proud of being able to help. As we know, as a criminologist, I'll put my hat of criminology on for just a moment. As school uh, increases, the amount of school one has, the opportunities, or let's say the, the negative of going to prison or being involved in the criminal justice system decreases. So as education increases, the idea of being involved in the criminal justice or juvenile justice system decreases. So we're very happy that we're a part 
of moving school forward and helping students earn those credits for high school. So again, set this as an example as you're thinking about sustainability. And if you've already got those established relationships with your school board and others, this is a plus to help with sustainability. So when you're thinking, all right, what type of youth are, are, are looking, are they looking for or what has been in the past? You see our risk factors, they're located on our webpage. We use that from the Texas Education Agency. But we're also looking for that youth that needs to spend quality time with a mentor, a mentor that's a police officer. Perhaps there have been personal experiences, vicarious relationships that can help grow the student as well as the officer from the coming together of these two groups. So there's our description of the course. And again, this is going to be recorded uh, and available to you. There's the description of the course here in 113-0025, Texas Education Agency, some of our outcomes and our risk factors that can help you in putting together your proposal. Just some more information. This is TAPS Academy. Remember, that's the 11-week program. We have something of 30 modules available to you uh, that are uh, the mandatory modules. There are additional modules. The curriculum is provided for you pre-test, post-test, just about everything you need except for the youth, the location, uh, the officers, you provide those and we'll go through those in just a moment, but we are there to assist you every step of the way so that you can have a successful Tax Academy program. And this success comes from that upon completion of Tax Academy or that last six months or so, we're moving a, a, very aggressively to sustaining TAPS Academy. That last year is, is, yeah, we're going to the school board. We're working with you. We're, we're talking with whatever organization you've been working with so that this can keep going, smoothly going past the two years of funding. Team Poll, more information on Team Poll. Now with Team Poll, to think of it there, your model is going to be very close to this. You're going to see that you're going to be in the school, that's the primary location of TAPS, but it is not unusual to have this as a Saturday program, to have it as an after-school program. Think of it as where will you have this audience of youth that want to be there, that will be there, a steady population for you to have contact 1.5 hour per week. That, that's, a, that's a good foundational piece to keep in intact and keep in mind. Yes, after school programs provided, Saturday programs provided, but we have just found through experience that working together with the school to have the assembly of the 24, 25 youth to be there, maybe during their community time period, uh, maybe some other uh, arrangements can be made, works extremely well and just logistically has the best opportunity for success. Our goals and our key performance indicators for TAPS Academy are extremely important. And we, we, will, we will train into having those and joining us to have the same thoughts. First of all, we believe reducing the social distance, reducing that tension, that <clears throat> lack of understanding, the, the conflict that exists between youth and police, we work to reduce it every day. Yes, folks talk about it. Yes, people say it's a problem. But the question becomes how many people are doing something about it? TAPS Academy does something about it every day through evidence-based research programming, pre-test and post-testing of our officers and youth, hearing from the community and others about reducing that social distance. Now, why is reducing social distance so important? We know reducing social distance and having greater understanding, uh, faith, respect, and trust of individuals builds legitimacy. And when legitimacy is built, you have safer communities. It's as simple as that. This has come out through the President's Commission's uh, law enforcement the research and others that when you build legitimacy, when people believe I can have faith in this police department, I can have faith in these officers, they're more likely to be involved in helping to rid their area of crime. They're more likely to be bonded to society, to not be involved in the crime in the first place. So this, when I, when I hear people say, oh, that's a great program, Dr. Penn, 
but it's not crime fighting. We're going to work on that. We're going to have people to know that this is a program that reduces crime delinquency. So two, skill building. Through our modules that start off with the role of the police officer, conflict mediation, working through drugs, alcohol, uh, human trafficking, just about 30 modules. We even have one on auto maintenance, 30 different modules that we update every year during the summer. So you'll be getting, when, when we do the training that July, August timeframe, you'll be getting the updated lesson plans, uh, modules, workbooks. This, tr these trainings and modules build these skills to help for the youth as well as the officers. Remember, the officers are in it just like the youth. So if there's an exercise, for example, of doing a vision board or time management, we want the officers to be involved, not just sitting on the sideline watching, but to be actively involved. And then our final goal or key performance indicator is service learning. We believe that the idea of giving back to the community actively giving back to the community is extremely important. Therefore, when we do a TAPS Academy program, which is usually 11 weeks or a semester uh, program with a teen poll, each officer and each student will do three hours of service learning. The service learning programs have been a variety, everything from working in the food bank to planting gardens to making blankets and food packages and military packages to just a variety, just a variety of, of ideas that exist here. We'll be able to help you with some of those ideas as Ms. Z, our service learning coordinator, will be able to provide when we have the training, all of these opportunities to think of as youth and police officer work together to look at what will help our community most in service learning. And we follow the concept of ear with service learning. Education first in the classroom of why this project is important. A, action in the community. And then finally, R, reflection. What did we learn? What did we do? What can we gain from this? This is also helpful to move students from the belief, I got to get paid for everything I do. Or that community service is something you do because the court has ordered it. Why not move that idea to let me help and improve my community and the people in it? And that's what we try to do with service learning. Some of the pictures you see below, the Houston Independent School District, the police officers that work with us with TAPS Academy. The picture to the far left was a wonderful fundraising uh, opportunity that we had this summer at the Galleria Mall here in Houston where the police officers were the models. And this is the final presentation of that evening where they came out in their different uniforms as they serve as police officers in the Houston Police Department. Just a wonderful evening that we had. Our driving values. What's important to us that we want you to have as important to you as you join the TAPS family? Building trust, having open dialogue, creating mutual respect, promoting connectedness, building a better community, and justice for all. If these thoughts look familiar, yes, they come from the President's Task Force on 21st Century Policing. They come from this gentleman right here. There will be a prize there for those who could answer who that person is. I'm sure some of you are familiar. But former mayor of Houston, Brown, but I'm not finished with his resume yet. Uh, one of the first African-Americans to receive a PhD in criminal justice, criminology. He would go on to be the police chief of Atlanta, New York, and Houston, drug czar, United States, and still a resident here in Houston. The gentleman below here is my former student. I like saying that a lot. But now the Houston police chief, Troy Finner. He was a TAPS officer and uh, moved through the ranks to now lead the Houston Police Department and the challenges that come with that. But uh, Chief Troy Finner, former TAPS officer. This is our national creed. Our national creed was developed by students in our second TAPS class. 
desiring to put together a, a call, a, 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 a unifying statement of what they have learned or what they do in TAPS Academy. We are going where we have never gone to do what we have never done, to have what we have never had, then to no longer be an Atlas kid, but an at promise team. This is the TAPS creed. Again, that at risk is there. Some go by the way of saying at risk, a child is at risk of anything happening to them negatively, but we take that to at risk to be at promise. Let's give them opportunities that perhaps they have not seen before through TAPS Academy and through the network that comes from TAPS Academy. Just a moment or two on, and you'll get a, a good dose of this in the TAPS training, just some of the TAPS do's, what we believe in, what we follow. And the idea is that we listen to the youth, the youth listen to us, not necessarily to make that quick response, but we listen to hear, not just to respond. We want voice to be prominent with all the folks involved with TAP. So taking that time to have effective communication is very, very important. The idea of leaving biases outside of TAPs, that we work to eliminate them so that we see people for people, their characteristics of the individual, rather than perhaps what our implicit, explicit biases have us believe about certain groups or certain people. We believe that youth and police are on equal footing. Youth and police are on equal footing. So other programs, youth programs, may, may strongly believe that the police officer is the end all, the only authority, the person who knows everything. No, no, to come to TAPS Academy, it is the sharing of ideas, it's the working together, it's, it's the idea of following what so many documents tell us in policing is police do not have all the answers and they need the help of the community. We give an opportunity for that. We lead by example, we're evidence-based in our programs and our practice, all for the purpose of reducing the social distance between youth and police. Here's some help as you're thinking about and you're putting together your proposal. There needs to be a strong association between the police department and your partner organization. So two organizations at least need to come to the table. Your police department, whether it be your school police department, your metro police, local police, uh, sheriffs, whomever, that, that policing law enforcement agency, and then your partner organization, which could be the school, the middle school, the high school, could be the boys and girls club, the after school program, the church group, whomever is going to help you provide those youth Think of that as your community group, your school organization, your partner organization. Police and your partner organization must be very strong. That, that relationship, if it doesn't exist now, please work before submitting the application to make us comfortable that that's a very strong relationship. That's imperative. That's a foundational piece to work very, very well. And that partner organization can bring so much just this week I was with a city that is planning to be taps very, very soon. And they're partnering with, partnering with a, uh, uh, the police department is partnering with a civilian organization that's just done so much in the community that they're using TAPS Academy just as, as the jump off piece to all the mentorship, programming, uh, trips, enhancement that will take place. We saw that with our TAPS Academy in Las Vegas which is really under the city of Las Vegas and My Brother's Keeper, MBK program, coming together to just accent and do more beyond that of the TAPS Academy curriculum. So please make sure your partner organization, the police department, law enforcement, have a very, very tight connection. Tell us about the association and how you will enhance the TAPS programming in your area. That's what I'm saying. That, that, that strongness, that other resources that can be brought in from that partner organization will look very good in the presentation. We're only able to reimburse you for your personnel costs and service learning, which I'll talk about in just a moment, but your personnel costs, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Think of it also as an entire year with a cohort of police and youth. 
And then finally, what we said before, show sustainability past the funding period. Make us know how this will stay alive and will flourish in your area past that of the grant period. You'll see three cohorts of youth during the time frame. Think of cohort one, August 2022 through July, and then cohort two, then cohort three. Six youth to one officer is the ratio we found works very, very well. And we'll get into the, uh, the officer pay and all that in just a moment. We see 10th and 11th graders as most desired because they are in the program, able to be traced, uh, the ability to uh, keep up with them. So, and also that population works well. It's often a population people have forgotten about. People have said they're already on their path to go there. No, we don't, we don't agree with that. So that 10th and 11th grade is desired. If there is another population that you see, you can make the argument for that, but just letting you know, we desire that 10th or 11th grade to be that uh, one going through that year of TAPS Academy. 1.5 positive contact for 50 weeks. 50, think of it as 52 weeks, but we know, okay, you gotta take some time off for Christmas, et cetera, but 50 weeks. And the, that includes the summer, positive contact during the summer. So face-to-face uh, -face is primary, uh, but we have technology that allows us to keep up with our youth. The idea is big brothers, big sisters, if you want to give a comparison, that's what's going to come about with that officer in the sixth youth, mushrooming to 12 as one period I'll show you here in just a moment. But that's what that officer is doing, is, is being that positive role model for the youth and the youth being able to have that officer as the mentor. So just quickly here, as I wanna make sure we have a good amount of time for Q&A, here's your timeline of this here, what August is being the start time, TAPS Academy being inside of a school, being in an after-school program, 1.5 hours. So you'll see in just a moment that we're compensating officers, we're averaging three hours. We understand that that first semester, that first August to December time period, as you're learning the curriculum and getting started, we understand that there may be a little bit more time that's necessary in starting uh, that first semester. But then things get busy in, in 2023 because not only then have you graduated from TAPS Academy meeting every week, that first cohort, but that second, that, fir that first cohort is now being in our mentoring program, which we'll talk about in just a minute, for 1.5 hours, plus you're starting up the second cohort at that same time period as that January uh, time period of 2023. So it gets busy in 2023 and then eases off a little bit as we look to 2024 as that one year with cohort one comes to an end, but you still have cohort two and then cohort three ending in that uh, July 2024 timeframe. So your, your commitment is basically August 2022 to July, August, 2024. 75 hours roughly is 75, excuse me, students, youth are we looking at at each site. So three cohorts with 24 to 30 students at most with each and three cohorts is what we're looking at and about 75 students, youth from each. Now you may be asking a question. Okay, Dr. Penny, you've explained to me and I understand TAPS Academy we're going to be in a school, an after-school program. Every youth is going to know to come every Wednesday from 1 o'clock to 2.30, the hour and a half. Okay, that sounds pretty good. It'll be great to have it at the school, uh, to have Ms. Applebaum, the assistant principal, gather all the students that are TAPS Academy students. They know to be in room 123 from 1 o'clock on Wednesday to 2.30. Wonderful. Or we may be an after-school program where we help with transportation and our students know from 3.30 to five o'clock to be at the XYZ church, boys and girls club, wherever it may be. Pretty easy to follow during the school year. But what about the summer? Because we said that it's a one year commitment. What about those people who have graduated from TAPS Academy that full semester of 
being in the school environment or that after school where we have the modules, et cetera. TAPS clubs provide us with an answer. TAPS clubs are an opportunity for those who have graduated from the TAPS Academy program meeting every week for the entire semester, the 15 or 18 weeks, what do you do now? You're now trained up and ready to be a great role model to others. So TAPS Academy then moves to TAPS clubs for those who have graduated. Here you have an opportunity for your students to be leaders in their community. If it's in a school environment, they can now officially have a club, a, a registered organizational club at the school called TAPS clubs that works with police officers to hear what's necessary in the community, the community of the school, and provide programming, whether it be setting up a table at the beginning of school for human trafficking, at the lunch room, uh, maybe a program, an assembly, working with officers to hear what's needed at the school, providing the help from the officers to provide the programming and support to better the entire school community. If it's an after school program, if it's one that's at the local church or, or the uh, Boys and Girls Club, same thing. What does the community need? And this club becomes an opportunity where they meet not as often as that of a TAPS Academy meeting weekly, but they meet as often as necessary to put on great programming to assist in building relationships with the community. They've already built the relationship with the police officer. Now they're spreading themselves wider to be able to build that community with police officers, the youth, et cetera. Excellent opportunity for them for college resumes and credentials to say that they started a club, they were the vice president of the club, the president of the club, giving them an opportunity to excel and to do so much for the community. Let's get down to funding. Some may be asking the question, hey, you're talking a whole bunch. What about the money here? What's the funding look like? We're looking at quarterly reimbursements. Let me stress again, reimbursements, quarterly reimbursements. So that individual, that police officer, that civilian lead person, their pay should not be interrupted by this being a reimbursement process. We'll set up an MOU and all the agreements and all the procedures, et cetera, but about a quarterly reimbursement is going to take place. There are at least for each site, six people that are necessary. One is the non-paid grant administrator. That could be someone in your police department, that the primary organization that's going to sign with us, whether it be that school or the police department, that primary organization should have someone that this is just a sign as their additional duty to be the person that ensures that everything that we need as far as evaluations are done, that the paperwork is good, timesheets are signed properly, and sends that information to us. So your non-paid grant administrator. There's going to be a need for one paid civilian site leader. The civilian site leader will not have any youth. This person's job is to assist the four officers in what they do, whether it be making sure all the logistics is ready for the classroom and the environment where TAPS Academy will take place, setting up summer activities, additional activities, keeping folks together, finding uh, other um, people, guest speakers, et cetera. That's your civilian site leader. The civilian site leader, as we found here in TAPS Academy, we call them ESs here, educational specialists, also serve a vital role to be a balance between the youth and the police officers. Remember we said on equal footing? So that civilian site leader helps to make sure that that is done. Then the four officers that you will select, that we will train. These officers may have had experience with DARE, great PALS, et cetera, but they have to have in their DNA the desire to work with youth, to perhaps work with some of the most at-risk youth, the desire to go beyond the initial coldness that, that the youth may give to them. The first week is rough. The second week is rough. Around week four, it gets a little bit better, but we build that into our modules where by week four, we're doing team building and getting the officers out of their uniforms, doing activities with the youth that uh, really build up the, the cohesion that they're existing. 
And then service learning, we're providing about $1,000 a year for service learning activities. Finishing up here with just a few more slides here. Let's see, there are at least three questions in the chat or at least three points in the chat. Responsibilities and costs for each site. I want to make sure we have this clear here. The responsibility of each site is to come up with the youth for the site. Six to one ratio is what we recommend. No more than 30 youth, about 24, 25 is what we're expecting from each site for each of the cohorts. Make sure you have your best officers that are prepared for mentoring, that are going to be there for the entire year. Yes, we know promotions, et cetera, come, but those who are going to be committed, we have found out, we talk about this in the training, we do not want to abandon our youth. This may have already occurred with them. So the officers that are going to be there for the entire year serving, or actually should be thought of the entire two years for this grant and the uh, moving forward. Your civilian site leader and organization. And let me, let me point that also, that although we say a civilian site leader, think of that site leader as what does he or she bring to this coming together of police and youth? Maybe it is someone who is a counselor at the Boys and Girls Club who can bring that, wow, we have an entire facility for us to meet during the summer. We have, we have athletic activities that take place. If it's someone at the school, does that person have access that the school can perhaps be open during the summertime to be the central meeting place? You have to think, where is the location where everyone can meet in, in additional to the time when school is not in place. So school works very well. Since most people drive or walk to the school, the school can be a great place to be that. So that, that civilian leader brings that to the table. Don't forget about what the police department brings with their own uh, facilities and, and, and special opportunities that they have. You're providing your office and school materials, paper, pens, markers, boards, your basic standard uh, computer for the presentations as you'll have all the modules and curriculum, the uh, PowerPoint, all that good stuff that goes along with being able to present PowerPoint. And snacks. We recommend snacks every other week. Takis and a soda go very far with our youth. <laughs> very far indeed. But switch that up. We even have one module that's on health and nutrition. And we try not to serve Takis on that day, but we know how popular they are. So that's where you can have your associations with that local food store, that local business person. Uh, and then that moves to graduation. Graduation, after they finish that TAPS Academy, that, that time that they're meeting every week in that school, that first part, or in that after school program, we celebrate that. That's a celebration that they have finished this, this cohort of coming together once a week through TAPS Academy programming. They still have another six months or so to go with the mentorship part of it, but we celebrate that. Pizza, cake, and drink need to be thought of. Usually a local business from the police departments we work with has no problem hosting that. There are some places that have gone totally uh, extravagant with that, with dinners at restaurants, food trucks, and other activities there, bowling, pizza, et cetera. So, Think of the graduation celebration. That should be a big event. That should be an event that is celebrated with your mayor, your community, television cameras. I, I think police departments don't do a good enough job celebrating their triumphs. They seem to be always behind. Let's get in front of that as community is built with youth and police. We'll provide your training, guidance and assistance throughout, the curriculum, the workbooks, the lesson plan, T-shirts for youth and officers and staff, media attention, evaluation report, whatever you need to succeed, we will provide that. It's TAPS Academy out in El Paso during some of their summer activities. We will help you with that. Let's go to the questions. This is a picture of TAPS Academy out in Las Vegas that uh, was doing a service learning project and brought together all these youth, all these uh, smaller youth these younger youth and have them involved. So the, the ideas for what service learning can be for your TAPS Academy are only limited by our imagination. And during the training, Ms. Z will help with what we've learned works well with uh, service learning.
to think about that for your area. So we'll have the month of July to get you all trained up so you'll be ready to go in August. So I'm gonna open up the floor and I'm going to give it over to Mr. Will Manning, Ms. Middleton. If you can tell me if there are any questions in the chat that I need to answer first and then we'll open it up to everyone. Doesn't look like there are any uh, questions in the chat that I can see. Okay, sounds good. What, now again, if we have not answered a question, please ask that question now. Is there something that we have missed that we're not clear on that can help you as you're putting together your proposal? Yes, uh, let me ask you about the uh, budget page since you yes. are still screen sharing. If you could flip, all right, right there, that's it. Now, you said that 66,000 or thereabouts was available. Is is it 66,000 as a hard figure or is it flexible depending upon uh, the grant proposal that you receive? Because I'm thinking of some um, potential embellishments to what you're doing. I see that I see exactly what it is that you're doing, right? And But I do see that there are ways that um, a component could be added that yes. may take your program to the next level. Um, Indeed. So you're, you're saying a lot. You're saying a lot there, Dr. Sultan. What you see in front of you is about sixty-two thousand dollars here. Right. We know that there may be an additional training that that's needed. Um, maybe there's an invention, an, an activity that's taking place. So we're approximately stating sixty-six thousand dollars for each location. So that's our budget that we have for each of the sites. Don't know that we'll be able to go farther than that, but about 62 is in front of you now with about $4,000 that's available for additional personnel, site leader time or officer time during our two years together. Okay. Um, another question that I had for you is, I assume it is not required for there to be an agreement for high school credit for those who participate in this program. Is that correct? That is correct. Texas is the only state that we currently have that. But as we move forward, we have found that that is a significant tool for sustainability, that you don't have to find the time uh, can we have TAPS Academy in the morning, the afternoon? But to know that two fires are being put out with one hose, that not only are they gaining TAPS Academy, but also gaining one academic credit is certainly a plus for sustainability. We provide the model. We will assist you, show you the documents, talk to your legislators or other folks, your school board to assist in seeing that this can be done, setting the example of one academic credit for the TAPS curriculum. Okay, now you, it appears, uh, staying with this funding page, it appears that there has to be a minimum of four officers. Is that a requirement or can you say, well, look, you know, I got two really good officers that are doing just great work. We got a site, you know, we have our own cops house that we could do stuff in. We have high school space, we may be able to do stuff in. But right now we know we got two guys who can do it in, and we could easily handle 12 students. Or are you saying based on this funding page that you have to have at least four officers and have at least 24 students who are participating? We found best practice is a six to one ratio. That is not to say that's the only way for it to be done. You may have two individual officers that are just outstanding. You may have your police department volunteer other officers to be a part of this uh, TAPS Academy programming. So you may have six officers, seven officers assigned to this. We've just found this is best practice and this is what we're going to reimburse for each site. But those are things that can be worked out once award is given and that time period of June as we work out MOU. Okay, so, so um, what you're presenting is the framework, but there is some flexibility as you review individual applications, correct? We're looking for the best of possible outcomes, sustainability being very important. TAPS Academy is not rigid. 
Yes, we have standards that are in place for our evaluation. We know what our best practices, but we want this to be the roadmap for building better relationships in your city. And that does not come with a rigidity or a rigorous presentation of this is what you must do. You know your city, your location better than us. This is what's been found generally to work. But if there's more, if there's a change, present what will work best in your presentation, your RF, your proposal that you're gonna give to us. We'll make that decision and we can work out those intricate details during that month of June so that mm -hmm. we can have that MOU ready to go to have the best TAPS programming available in your city. Okay, and then my final question that is not so much related to the grant proposal process, but I was wondering if at some point um, TAPS intends to hold a national conference where it brings together um, the various uh, participants, both police officers and students from around the country, I guess you bring them to Houston, but to have a national conference to talk about uh, what you've been able to achieve during the past a decade or so. Uh, it seems to me that um, there is a wealth of information that you may not yet have tapped because everybody hasn't yet come together and look eye to eye and break mm -hmm. bread and talk about what their individual experiences are around the country. We've moved toward that with having monthly telephone calls that uh, come together with the sites we currently have. The idea of a conference is exactly on target to where we're headed, that there are so many rich ideas that come out of each site. Mr. Will Manning is the person who collects our, our media from these sites, and we just learn so much from them, and we have to capture it. TAPS Academy is ramping up its media, is ramping up its, its marketing, its, 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 its learning process. Just recently, my book has come out, Youth and Police, which provides you with an overview of understanding where TAPS Academy comes from and some of the issues related to it. I welcome you to read that book and to understand how important we see this movement is. But that idea of moving to a conference, I hope it's face-to-face is something that is on the radar, hopefully in the next two years. Maybe that is something that we can mm -hmm. look at during this grant process, especially that year two, for us to have all these ideas coming together. And maybe another OJJDP grant could come out of it also. So thank you for that point there. We're, we're thinking the same thing. Well, 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 let me ask you one other question and this would be my final one. Um, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Penn, I've, been doing this crime prevention stuff for close to 40 years now. And I have okay. found uh, site visits are important components. Yes. Uh, do you uh, plan to do any site visits? And are you open to the idea should um, a group with which I'm working locate some separate funds to come down and do a site visit with you before they actually implement their program. Because I found that site visits are, are indispensable for people really getting the true flavor of what's going on. 100% again, on target with our thought. Tax Academy is functioning here in Houston through June. Let us know, we would love to have you take a look at what we do. I know that may be difficult for some people who may be listening to this recording, but yes, we are open in, on any day, Monday through Friday, we are probably in somewhere between three to six schools. So there's a great opportunity that you would have Monday through Friday. Yes, we do have money allocated for site visits to your sites. Evaluation, training, what's working, what's not, we're still coming out of that kind of COVID time frame, but I think hopefully the world is opening up. But yes, we do have funds to travel, to see you, to see all the great things, to document it, but also use that time as an evaluation piece, an AAR, an after action review that we do with so many sites. What's going on? How can we make this better? What do we need to do at the national level 
to assist to make TAPS in XYZ city, XYZ state to be the best it possibly can be. So we are on target with same thoughts with those also. Okay, so you would be willing to, or, or you'd be open to a, a grant applicant coming down to take a look at your TAPS program even prior to the point at which their application is submitted, if we can work that out? Indeed, there's no problem with that at all. Just let us okay. know and we'll host you for that day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, great questions. We're coming up on our hour, just over the hour. Again, this is going to be, or is going to be recorded. It's going to be placed on the grant website, the RFP website. Are there any further questions? Dr. Penn. Uh, yes, sir. Can you hear me, this Chief Aragon? How are you, sir? Yes. We must have read this wrong. I, I thought it started at 11 Central Standard Time. But oh, all right. Well, maybe there was a, a change or something was written on my part incorrectly. Please pardon me. If it is, we'll, are we seeing people come in? Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're at the tail end now. I got Eric with me, Dr. Dr. Robichaud. Uh, All right. Dr. Well, I'll tell Duarte. you what, I'll, I'll stay on for any questions. This is being recorded. So we'll go a little longer here if there are some folks that need questions. For those of you who may have just come on, this is being recorded and we can provide this and we'll have this up, I hope, and by early next week on our website for anyone oh, to listen in. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, so pardon me for the mistake that, that may have happened there. With no, the I, 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 we read it again. It says 10 to 11. Okay, I thought it was, okay. All right. It's our, no it's our fault. No problem. I see Dr. Uh, Duarte there. So she, right. she read it right. Are there any other questions that we can answer? Again, because it is a grant process, we'll wanna keep the questions open to everyone. So if we don't respond back, please understand that we have to make sure we're fair to everyone. If it's a question that will help the benefit for all, we'll put it on the website. But uh, we hope that we have answered the questions today. Ms. Middleton is available. Mr. Will Manning, myself, to answer your questions. Look through the TAPS Academy documents, read the book, understand where we're coming from, Google us and see our success. Talk to those who've had TAPS Academy in their city and working with us. Please do that there, come visit us. We are open, but we look forward to seeing some great, great applicants submit their credentials for the 10th of May. And, and I'm gonna order your book, Dr. Penn, but I want you to autograph it the next time I see you. All right. That is a, that is a plus. That is going to happen. That is. All right, everyone. With that said here, I am going to stop sharing here. Wishing everyone well. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to end and stop the recording. And again, we'll have this posted up hopefully by Tuesday of next week. And let us know. Ms. Middleton is available to answer your questions. Thank you so much. Have a great, great TAPS day. Bye-bye.